Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This week, we finally caught up with Simmons on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and we found out what Kraken's been doing. The interesting thing is that even though they had a super-powered comic book character in the episode, he wasn't even the biggest thing. And I really like that they did that. They made Simmons the main character of the episode. So let's start with top five moments, then I'll do my review, and then I have a few announcements because today is also Arrow Day. So careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. I'll wait just a sec. Okay, everybody ready? Number five, Kraken is stealing S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Did anyone else catch the reference to Sound of Music in that first scene? It was the very good place to start line. That's from the Do Re Mi song. Very sinister. I like the way they twisted that. It reminded me of American Psycho when Christian Bale was murdering Jared Leto to hip to be square. It was just a really funny example of them turning a really famous song on its head. There was a whole lot of sound of music going on in this episode. I mean, that story takes place in Nazi Germany. Kraken is a Nazi. It makes you think of Clark Gregg as like the Christopher Plummer character, Captain Von Trapp, like he's trying to keep his family safe from the Nazis. I guess that would make May the Julie Andrews Maria character, but I don't ever see her breaking into song. They did dress Sky up kind of like a nun with her black hood here. It's just a fun way to look at the episode. Music was a big part of the episode too, and Sound of Music was a musical, so it's all very appropriate. The Whedonverse has this really interesting relationship with music. I mean, if you're a big Buffy fan, then you remember they did the all musical episode. I don't think that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. will ever do a musical episode, but it did get pretty musical this week. Kraken was kind of a bookend for the episode. You know, he opened and closed it. We're going to see a lot more of him in the future, just because Simmons is going to be working directly with him. Aside from that Sound of Music moment in the beginning, though, my favorite part was probably the big oh shit at the end where they implied, you know, they might be brainwashing Simmons. Number four, Donnie Gill, aka Blizzard, is back. I love that they had some fun with the powers in this episode, and that they kind of buried the lead a little. I mean, he wasn't the biggest part of the story. He was like the MacGuffin. Like, he was just a device to move the plot forward. So, I'm glad we didn't spend more time with him than necessary. You know, yes, powers are cool, but this was an episode all about Simmons and Hydra, so Blizzard was just there as a way to explain how Hydra's conditioning works. It also kind of paid off last week's episode where Absorbing Man got all creepy, you know, compliance is rewarded. Clearly, he has also been in that machine. So if you're confused, Donnie Gill had been Hydra the whole time. It just turns out that his conditioning wore off and he ran away. The fact that they didn't find the body at the end of the episode just means that he's still out there, like they didn't kill him off at the end which kind of ties back into the Sky crossing someone off storyline. Number three, Sky is trying to keep it together and learn how to cross someone off the list. It's really all about her learning to kill someone and deal with it. They kept repeating that theme, crossing someone off the list. I thought the watch they made her wear, that one that tracked her pulse, was a little unnecessary. It was just a way to show how she was handling things. That last scene when Ward told her about her dad and the watch had a heart attack, that was basically her losing it. I mean, she calmed herself down. But she's just trying to become a good agent like May, which requires control. Or compliance, I guess, depending on which team you play for. I just love the way the Team Hydra storyline and the Team Coulson storyline mirrored each other this week. It's all about compliance and control. It makes you feel like everyone on the show has an evil twin, and it's all about finding out who the evil twin is. Number two, Fitz almost kills Ward. So I totally love Fitz in the episode. I did not love Ward's performance. And I think that's how the writers want us to feel. Like, Fitz hasn't really had a confrontation with Ward since the finale last year, so this was a long time coming. Like, this was a big Fitz moment, not a big Ward moment. I know a lot of you have theories about Fitz maybe turning evil. I don't necessarily think that's what's going to be happening this season, and I think it has a lot to do with what happened with Coulson at the end. He just had that dad moment where he explains, yes, I'm keeping things from you, I'm your dad, I'm trying to protect you, and deal with a ton of other unrelated bullshit in the world, but you are an important part of this team. I actually kind of thought he was going to give Fitz a hug at the end of the episode. I do think that Fitz is going to be stuck, you know, with his brain problems for most of this season, but the character will have to go through a change at some point. I keep wondering if that's going to have something to do with the Hydra plot and the conditioning, or Sky's father and the obelisk. Characters have to change though. Matter only has two states of existence, growth and decay, so either Fitz has to keep getting worse, or he has to evolve somehow. And Evolve does not necessarily mean something good. Like, he could get wrapped up in the Simmons Hydra plot and something bad could happen. Which actually leads me to my number one moment. Simmons is Hydra. She was by far the best part of this episode. They could have just done the Simmons scenes and it still would have been an amazing episode. I mean, the rest of the episode was a lot of fun, but Simmons was definitely the best. The name of that song that she woke up to is God Help the Girl, which is kind of funny because Coulson brought food, helping the girl, thus Coulson is kind of like a god. 
He is immortal inside the Marvel Universe, so you could say he does have godlike qualities. It seemed like based on that last scene, she's going to stay embedded inside Hydra for as long as possible, probably at least the first half of this season. I don't think that's going to change until Kraken learns she's a double agent, and I definitely think that's going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if they did something like that during the mid-season finale, like Team Coulson had to fly in and rescue her. But just expect a whole lot more Kraken scenes whenever we get Simmons scenes. They're literally moving her upstairs, so she will be working directly with Kraken and his second in command. It's like Simmons is getting promoted to work inside one of these crazy Baron Von Strucker labs. That's actually a really interesting conversation because the work that Kraken and Baron Von Strucker are doing are way more advanced than normal Hydra bases. It's like that first Captain America movie where the Red Skull said that Hydra is way beyond the Nazis in terms of scope. Baron Von Strucker and Kraken are just way beyond the scope of normal Hydra, just pushing the boundaries of science. Obviously, we're not going to see Baron Von Strucker till Avengers 2, but Kraken is kind of like his character. Let me know though, what was your favorite part of the episode and what do you think that they're going to have Simmons working on in that upstairs lab? Just in general, I give the episode a solid B plus for amazing use of Simmons. I'm really happy with Natasha Henstridge's performance. Like her character is adorable, but she's also one of the most interesting ones too. It's still pretty early in the season, but I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to tie together the Kyle McLaughlin Obelisk storyline as well as the Hydra storyline. Obviously, it's going to have something to do with whatever they put Simmons on working, like whatever the new Simmons Hydra lab scenes are. I also think it's really interesting how they're positioning Coulson as being like the dad of the team. Like they do have a lot of fun with it. Even though he's not quite old enough to be Simmons' father, he still brings her meal, cooks her, treats her like his daughter. I guess of all the team members, Fitz and Simmons feel most like his children. Skye is also kind of like an older child, she's just a little bit more self-aware. I just love how willing Marvel is to take this show into the Whedonverse. Like all that Sound of Music stuff, that is pure Whedon right there. Next week, they're totally going full fan fiction with Coulson and May, and I am 100% on board with that. It just looks like it's going to be crazy. So because my Flash videos are always going to be going up Tuesday nights first, I'll try to get S.H.I.E.L.D. videos up as early as possible Wednesday morning, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. The real big news tonight is that Arrow Season 3 is premiering. I will be live tweeting, so if you want to play along with me, the links for all my social accounts are in the description. But be sure to check back after the episode too, because I'll be posting my video. If you noticed recently, Robert Downey Jr. has also been doing a whole lot of Avengers, Marvel, Iron Man 4 talk. You can click here to learn what that's all about, and you can click here for last week's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Thank you so much for watching, so let's all high five and meet back up for Arrow tonight.